I think at this point is when I say, and so without any further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce Clint Patterson to give our uh, keynote speech today. And if anybody has trouble understanding him, check with me later, I'll tell you what he said. Or he said, take care. We'll start off with a little turkey call. I just had to do that because usually in South Carolina today is like the opening day of turkey hunt season. So all my friends are at home calling turkeys, and I told them I was going to come up north and call some northern turkeys. So I see we're able to do that. We do have some turkeys in the audience that I at least know of. But uh, this is the Dina Con keynote. And again, you know, Joe mentioned the uh, sponsors, and I think we all really need to realize that we wouldn't be here, the conference wouldn't be happening without uh, the sponsors. So we really need to say uh, thanks to the sponsors. You know, these guys have booths, really go and interact, talk with these people. They have services uh, that you could probably partner with, and uh, I mean, just be sure to tell them thanks. So I also want to just uh, pause and say, you rock. Thank you to Joe, uh, Don Bishop, David Poindexter, and anybody who was part of the uh, Dean and Con team. I, I want you guys to stand up, Joe, David, and Don, so you guys stand up. Let's give those guys a round of applause. We, we posted uh, two conferences in Charlotte, and when you host a conference, you realize there are tons of details that you don't really even consider and things that, I mean, it just it gets overwhelming. And it's not like these guys are making money off of this. It's out of the goodness of their heart. So, uh, you know, really thank you, Joe, for organizing this. Because I know when we hosted, when we finally got to the conference weekend, I was just like, oh my God, I'm just glad it's happening. And then over, it's kind of like a relief. Uh, also, earlier I was in the bathroom and met some guys from Nigeria here. So we've got, has anybody traveled further than Nigeria? Yes. Uh, Yes, who? Uh, one? Uh, Gilbert Olahai is from Cameroon. Where's Cameroon? So if you're from Cameroon or Nigeria, stand up. <laughs> Thank you guys. That, uh, that's a long way. The company's flight was 20, 29 hours. So it's pretty flattering to have you know, come this far. Uh, to be with us, and, and you know, I hope that I hope your trip is worth it. So you guys be sure to connect uh, with the DNA guys there. Now, um, speaking of Joe in particular, you know, he was just talking about me. But I'll tell you a little bit about Joe. He uh, he was emailing me a couple of weeks ago or months ago, and he was like, you know, Clint, what do you, what do you think about the keynote? And I was like, did, like, did you mean to send that to me, or was, <laughs> I thought he was sent it to the wrong person. He's like, no, no, uh, really, we want you to do the keynote at DNA Con. I said, well, when is it? And he's like, April 1st. And I'm like, is this a, like the April Fool's joke? Or like, what's going on here? He said, no, I'm, I'm serious. He said, I want you to come up to the northern D.C., Baltimore area. He said, we're going to have a huge, just a huge <laughs> DNA rally. And he's like, uh, and he's like, it's going to be absolutely amazing. He's like, uh, we want you to come, and we want to make DNA again. And, uh, and, and so I was going to put up some, you know, red hats would make DNA great again, but I, I held off because I don't want to get shot up here. Um, and he also told me that Mexico was going to pay for the conference. So I don't know if you keep sponsoring them, I can get some money back. Um, but seriously, though, it's, it's my honor to uh, be here and people are trying to Skype and tweet at me to bother me. Let me close that. It's, uh, it's my honor and privilege to be here speaking in front of you all today. Um, I don't deserve to be here. Uh, I feel like I'm speaking to a room full of people who have paved the way uh, for me. And I'm just as surprised as you are that I am actually up here speaking. So let's be honest, we're struggling for speakers in the DNA community. All right? So if you are a speaker at the next keynote, you know, I'm, I'm going to raise the bar to a new level for you today. So make it easy for you. So I apologize in advance for what may happen here in the next little bit. So if you don't know me, my name is Clint Patterson. I know Joe talked a little bit. I'm from Pageland, South Carolina, which is the watermelon capital of the world, a.k.a. God's country. Okay? <laughs> and it is hunting season, and my friends are questioning my integrity for leaving the state during hunting season. 
Um, but I'm platform manager at Arrow Consulting and Design. And uh, any y'all want to throw snap remarks? I'm at CVPSC uh, on Twitter. So that's a little bit, you know, just like contact info in my background. A lot of times when I go to conferences and hear people speak, I, I really wish like I knew a little bit more about the person before they started speaking. Like I want to understand their background, where they're coming from, like you know, who are they? And so to help you guys out with that, we're gonna take a slide or two just to help you understand my background and do a little bit of self glorification. Because let's be honest, I probably won't get to speak again. <laughs> so we'll start off with things I like. Bacon cheeseburgers is probably the number one. I've got you know pretty strong liking for bacon cheeseburgers. Uh, also, I uh, like football, as Joe mentioned. Uh, all things redneck, this is Honda Pioneer. I I've got one of these, it's like the best investment I ever made, especially <laughs> when you shoot a deer way down deep in the woods. Now, my wife and mother would not agree with that. But uh, all things redneck, I really like Bojangles. Now, some of you may not even know what Bojangles is. If you follow me on Twitter, you may see that I like Bojangles. But uh, Joe, Joe Brinkman is a Popeyes fan, and he's like delusional. So, Bojangles is sweet tea, cavity water, however you want to describe it, but Bojangles is pretty good. And I'm also partial to moonshine in some uh, instances. Some of you may know that from previous uh, events. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, now for some things I don't like. <laughs> salad, start off with salad. Also, 3D prints that just mess up like halfway through. It really bothers me. I mean, you got like three or four hours and everything's perfect, and then all of a sudden it just it just wasted three hours. Anyway, I, I don't like that. Don't like PHP. <laughs> I've got a strong dislike for coyotes. I don't know if that bothers any of y'all, but uh, I've got some issues with coyotes. You can see my turkey decoy here. Now, this is an advertisement for my IoT session later today. So uh, we went hunting last weekend and I had the decoy moving and these coyotes came in and tried to attack the decoy. You can see the video on YouTube. So it was kind of crazy. But anyway, I don't like coyotes. Also, we're probably too close to DC for me to speak to this one, but I wanted to put this one in here just for Is Mitchell Sellers here? His piece still hung up? Okay, so I won't speak to this one. And just some pictures of me. Um, you know, I said I hunt, but just so you, you can see, I do hunt deer, and uh, I don't know. there we go, Cassidy, 10 pound gorilla, that is a 10 pound gorilla hat I'm wearing in the picture with the deer, so I'm kind of upset y'all didn't have any pictures. But anyways, play football a little bit, that picture of me jumping is like my freshman year when you're not good enough to actually play, play, and I say, hey, send the idiot out there to try to block field goal, so that, that was me. And then the catfish, it looks, you know, a little bit bigger because I had to stretch the picture, but it was like a 31 pound catfish. So now that you know a little bit more about me, uh, I want to state my goal here before we get going into the presentation. Uh, my goal here is to inspire action among everyone in the room. Uh, I think we need to more openly share our knowledge on whatever level or depth that knowledge may exist. Um, I think it would be awesome if we could flood the DNA ecosystem uh, with content and information. I think it would really help a lot of people out. So let's be clear about what I'm trying to do here uh, before we get too far into the presentation because sometimes my ADD will act up and I just go off on a tangent. We won't even get to where we're trying to get to. So that's my goal to inspire action by everybody in here. So you think about community. What is community, right? What does community mean to you? I mean, community can mean a lot of things. Uh, to me, it means relationships, it means family, it means coming together for uh, a greater collective purpose. From a DNF perspective, the platform equals the community, or the community equals the platform. It's a reflection of the people coming together to achieve something that's much greater than ourselves, to achieve something that we all uh, can benefit from. And the community is on a journey, and we all play a part in that journey. So if you're here in this room, you're not only part of the community, but you're part of that journey. So when I look at myself here, I'm with Sean Bobble. I think this is like 2011. I had a little more hair back then. Uh, but when I think of myself, I can see that I'm definitely a product of the, the community. And I don't know if that's good for y'all to be associated with me, but for me, it's, it's good because people think I'm smarter than I am. Um, but seriously, like, 
We barely even have internet in South Carolina, and it's amazing that I can even get to a dead end site uh, and log in. But it's very obvious to me that without all of you, I wouldn't be uh, where I'm at today. So let's look at my, my DNN timeline a little bit. Um, now this timeline represents just some of the uh, points <coughs> in, in my journey to DNN thus far. Some of these moments involved alcohol, some did not. There's some that we can publicly talk about and some on, on here that we could not put on here um, just because it would be too embarrassing. Uh, there are moments like Collars for Will. Who remembers Collars for Will? Okay, these are the DNA goodies right there. So, but all along this timeline, there are people who played important parts uh, along my journey. So when I first bumped into DNN, um, I think it was like DNN, I don't know, like 2005 or six. First bumped into DNN, and I kept going on to this site called DNN Creative Lee Sauce. And it was like the first you know, site where this guy was posting a bunch of information. And you talk about funny accents. That guy had a funny accent. I could barely understand it. But there was this guy on the forum who kept answering all these questions. And I was saying, why is this guy answering all these questions? And it was Joe Craig answering questions. Now, I first kind of like got to know Joe Craig just by him posting on the message board all the time. I, I never really said anything to him because I was kind of scared to. But I learned of Joe Craig because he was constantly helping people out answering questions. So then I made my first DNN insight, and I think like I won some award in my state for just having a website, uh, that, like animated gifs and stuff, right? <clears throat> but then I realized like there's this thing called open source, and there's this thing called user groups, and I happen to be in the Charlotte area, and there was a user group in the Charlotte area, so I was like, well, I should join. And that's when I met people like Alan Foster, David Poindexter, who I mentioned earlier, uh, Ryan Moore. Uh, and, and the guys from the QC Doug are the now Southern Fried DNN user group. And so as I continued learning <clears throat> about DNN, you know, I would read blogs by people like Michael Washington, Will Stroll, Chris Hammond, uh, Ralph Williams, and several others along the way, several of you who are here in this room. Then we hosted our uh, conference in Charlotte. People like the moonshine we serve, so we said come on back next year. But then they got a little greedy and we couldn't do it three in a row. But when you host those conferences, you, we met, or I did, at least, everybody met a lot of people who would influence my journey uh, along the way. Then I joined DNN Corp, and I remember nagging Will Morganweck a lot during that time. He was uh, pretty influential in my journey. And then I wrote a blog series on module development. And uh, I would not have been able to write that by myself. I got some help from the Sean Walker, uh, from again Will Stroll, Sanjay Marotra, uh, Joe Brinkman helped proofread some of those, and those guys really helped me write that blog series. Um, and also, all the people who canceled at the last minute for keynote speaker helped me to get this first <laughs> keynote. So, you know, let's be honest, we appreciate that. So, but when you think about it, aren't we really all just standing on each other's shoulders? I mean, who in here could create an application as robust as DNN on your own accord? I know I definitely could not. Uh, you know, when I first started getting involved with the community and just seeing how people were really passionate about DNN, and they were like including me. So when people let me be a part of their passion project, when they include me and empower me, and even better yet, when it's like free source code that you can download, I don't know about you, but it really motivates me to give back. I mean, don't you guys feel motivated to give back simply by the awesomeness that you freely receive in the code? I mean, it's almost like a respect thing on so many levels. Um, and speaking of, you know, giving back, stuff like that, just kind of a, a sad story. You know, I mentioned I played a lot of football. My coaches in my hometown, I mean, it's just like you would imagine, Friday Night Lights, small town, football's all we got kind of thing. But those guys really invested a lot into me, into my teammates, uh, into my school, community, and town. I mean, these guys ensured that we were running the same offense from Pee Wee League all the way up to, you know, varsity. And um, they did a lot of things they didn't have to do. I mean, they, they really invested a lot in us. And because of that, I feel compelled to pay it forward at some point. I feel that I need to, at some point in my life, coach. Now, I've coached a couple of years. I've stopped since. Um, but I feel that, you know, simply by 
the, the grace that I have received from them, and they didn't want anything in return, that I need to pay it forward and get back. So at some point, I'll probably coach like a TV team and we won't and never win or whatever. But anyway, I feel that just because what those coaches have uh, or gave to me. So along the line of sports, how many in here are familiar with the term coaching trees? That is definitely a web conference here. Um, so <laughs> coaching trees is like a very common term in the sports world. And it's like a family tree uh, of coaches and their coaching descendants. For example, we can look at this guy, Nick Saban. Now, how many of y'all know that true football is played in the South? Anybody want to argue that? Okay, we got some. There we go. All right. So, but Nick Saban, he's won a ton. I mean, he has established a powerhouse and a legacy at Alabama like no other. Nick Saban handles the details. He handles the small things. And you know, they say if you handle the small things, the big things will just kind of take care of themselves. But Nick Saban invests a lot into his players and into his coaches, and he's really successful as a result. Now, they just won a national championship this past year, and before the game, I was watching an interview that ESPN did with the, the president of Alabama, and they said, so, sir, you pay Nick Saban like five, ten, I can't remember what, just some astronomical number of money, ridiculous. You pay him five million dollars a year. Is that, I mean, can you justify that? And the president, he didn't hesitate. Without a flinch, he said, Nick Saban is the best investment financially that this university has ever made. So, I mean, he's real successful, but it's because about how he goes about it. He invests a lot in his players. So when we talk about coaching trees, when you look at Nick Saban's coaching tree, or, or when I think about Nick Saban, I think a lot of things. But one of the things that I really consider is his contribution to the game, the game, the greater game of football, the sport. Uh, I mean, look at his coaching tree. He's got he's got a lot of coaches in here, like Mark Antonio, one of my Michigan graduate work people. Okay, we got some Michigan. So he's got like Mark Antonio, Jimbo Fisher. Now Jimbo Fisher at Florida State. He could tighten up on this one down there a little bit, but they went to some games. Right? Jason Garrett, Will Muschamp. He left Florida. He's now at the Gamecocks. We hope he takes the shame tops out of the shame and puts the gang tops back. Um, Derek Dooley, Lane Kiffin, Kirby Smart, he just left and he's going to be the head coach of Georgia. So, and, and, and this coaching tree is just people that coached with him. These are not his players. Uh, you know, my Clemson Tigers, Dabo Sweeney is the head coach there. He played for Nick Saban and his picture's not on here because he's not in the coaching like tree. But his impact is felt throughout uh, the sport. So what about this guy on the right? How many of y'all know who this is? Dean Smith? That's right. So everybody knows that the best basketball is played in the Carolinas, right? And you also see how when we talk about basketball, I claim North Carolina, and when we talk about football, I claim South Carolina. When you live on the line, you can kind of straddle it like that. But Dean Smith is a legend, and when you think about his coaching tree, and it's probably difficult for you to see, but he's two down from Nate Smith, right, inventor of the game. In his coaching tree, he's got people like Larry Brown, Roy Williams, George Carl, John Calipari, Greg Popovich, and Avery Johnson. So when you look at these names, you can see the impact that just one person can make. <laughs> and it's pretty remarkable. So I included this slide of Bill Walsh because I know there might be some people from San Francisco here and when we talk sports, I gotta give them something they can identify with, right? Because out there there's not much. But Bill Walsh, he's got a very impressive coaching tree. In here we've got Andy Reid, George Seifert, Mike Shanahan, Lovey Smith, Mike Tomlin, I think we have some Steelers in here, uh, Tony Dungy, Brian Billick, and that's just to name a few. So these guys are making very big impacts. And the common thread, and you could add more coaches in here, you could say your chefs here, whoever, but the common thread is that these people coached to make people better. They coach to make an impact, and their legacies are going to be felt, uh, are going to be visible in the game long after they're gone. So I want you to think about this from a DNM perspective, and we're talking sports, but let's think DNM. Can you name anybody who has influenced your journey in DNM thus far? Who is that person, or who are those people, and what did they do? Why, why do you remember them? So really think about that. Now turn the question back on yourself and, and ask yourself, can you name one person's journey who you have influenced? Will the ripple effects of your impact be big 
or small, or will they be none? So as I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm in a room full of people who have paved the path for me, so I see a lot of people in my DNA tree sitting in the audience. So when you think about you know, making an impact and leaving a legacy, how can you do that? To make an impact, you need to become an influencer. And how many influencers do you know that are sitting on the sidelines, right? Influencers are people who are active, they participate, and they contribute. And through those actions, they're able to connect, to motivate, and inspire, and ultimately, they're able to leave a legacy. So what is your DNA tree, if you will? If you want a tree, then become an influencer. And to be that, you need to get active, and you need to participate. So when you start participating, you are planting the roots of your DNA tree, so to speak. And every time you have community activity, you're essentially like watering the roots. And then when you influence others, it's like spreading the seed for more trees to take up. So imagine what the DNA code base and community uh, would look like if we all sought to give back, if we all felt compelled to make an impact, and if we were all influencers. Now, this is the all snap, the Ralph rap slide. Now, this has some backstory, but how many of y'all in here know that Ralph raps? Okay, how many of y'all want Ralph to rap right now? Woo! How's uh, that Ralph? Do you order drop a verse or two? I can give you a beat. Uh, Come on, man. Uh, get up there. I'm just joking. They, they say that you know you should put a jolt slide or something in your in your presentation. So that when the people, you know, kind of not paying attention, it'll bring them back, right? So I figured y'all would be like halfway asleep right now, so I have to just do this in here to kind of wake y'all up. <laughs> so back to the presentation. <laughs> Hopefully I've got you thinking about like making some type of impact, like participating or contributing. Um, and they say pictures of cats are good too, so I, I don't know about that, but I got dogs. Um, but once you get to the point of thinking about, hey, I'm gonna you know, make an impact, I'm gonna step out, I'm gonna share some information, it can be a little scary, it can be frightening, especially if you're not like participating a lot now. I remember when I first got into the community, I was embarrassed to, to even ask questions. Like I didn't want people to know how little I knew, I knew or did not know, right? But people like Alan Foster and David Poindexter, those guys made it okay for me to not know. They didn't judge. They encouraged and essentially watered my DNA tree. So I want to ask you, have you made it okay for those under your influence to not know? Have you empowered them? Are you watering the trees around you? Because keep in mind, when you get ready to get active at first, it's a little scary. So I got a slide up here about the imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome is where, and I suffer from this disease. It's where you think, like, the little blue circle is what you think, like, what I know. And then this big yellow circle is what everybody else knows. So, like, I'm dumb, and everybody else around me is so smart. And I really want to talk about this because the imposter syndrome, it stifles the sharing of knowledge. And stifling the sharing of knowledge ultimately stifles community growth. So, if you think back, I was scared to share the things I knew because I felt like, and I still sometimes do feel like, Oh, Mitchell, Mitchell Sellers was here now. I had a slide up for you earlier. We'll go back after a while. <laughs> I'm glad you're, you're hydrated and sober now. <laughs> uh, but I was scared to share the things I knew because I felt like everybody around me was 100 times smarter than me. And, and it's very intimidating. But the reality is that we all know different things and we all know different things in different ways. And there are overlaps in the things that we know. It's more like I know this and people around me kind of know about the same amount, but we overlap in our knowledge, and there's power in those overlaps. But if we're not sharing what we know because we're scared, then those overlaps don't exist, and we're not able to connect and keep moving forward. So does anybody else in here suffer from this imposter syndrome, or is it just me? Okay, good, so now I feel a little bit better. Hi, I'm Clint Patterson, welcome to. <laughs> uh, so, but seriously though, We've got to talk about this and end this because, again, it ultimately stops the community from growing. So it took me a while to figure out that the magic happens outside of my comfort zone. It's real easy to sit back and soak in all the knowledge and not say anything, but just you know, take it in. It's comfortable. But I'm here to encourage you to push yourself to share your knowledge. I'm here to encourage you to be uncomfortable. 
You know, I referenced the blog series that I wrote earlier. I don't feel like a developer. There are people in here that can code circles around me, but I push myself to post that blog series anyway. And guess who learned the most from that blog series? Me, right? So I've still got people emailing and tweeting and, and you know contacting me about how much the series has helped them. Like we've got Mark Butling in there, he wrote me an awesome email a couple of days ago. It made, made me feel real good. But the point being is that I want all of you to step outside your comfort zone. And if you do, not only will others benefit, but you will grow and you will benefit from it as well. So we've got this beginner's gap slide here. Um, I'm passionate about beginner resources and materials. I think that having awesome uh, getting started materials can lead to a lot of growth. I think we as a community just assume certain levels of knowledge, but people that come to the community they're coming from different avenues with different levels of knowledge and their onboarding experience or getting into the community experience could potentially be difficult, right? I think we need to remove any roadblock that we can for people getting into the community. And the most frustrating thing for me is when I get all excited or fired up about some technology or just whatever, and then I can't get past the very entry level questions. Then it's, it's just intimidating. I'm like, man, if I can't even install it, then how am I ever going to develop a module or whatever it may be? So I think we've got a lot of room for beginner level content, and I hope to inspire you all to, to help fill that gap. Uh, my blog series, the only thing I did was speak to the lowest common denominator, and I made sure to not assume any level of knowledge uh, by the reader. So with that, let's consider the newbie. So the newbie shares the same fears that you do, or that you did, or that I did, or did. Really think back to when you were first uh, getting started into DNN, back when you were the ultra newbie. Like, how did you feel? How did you go about finding answers? How did you get information, right? Was it frustrating? Did you encounter helpful people? Did you encounter people who were rude, snooty, posted one sentence of responses, and maybe were from Germany? You know? <laughs> What, what made you stick around? <laughs> Newbies ask questions that we feel are obvious, but realize that everything is obvious once you know it, right? And also realize that newbies represent a great opportunity to grow the community. So newbies are those DNA trees that are ready to be watered. So think about a process of onboarding a newbie. What can we do? as a community, right? We can flood them with materials and resources that are created by the community. I'm serious, we can put the fun back in fundamentals, y'all. I mean, it's, it's real, we can do it. Content, we just need to create content that's clear, concise, and helpful. And if it's visually rich, that is including screenshots and videos, that goes a long way for the newbie. And also, why is it that when somebody registers to DNNsoftware.com, DNN Connect, DNN Chat, any of the DNN sites, if somebody's in Charlotte, North Carolina, and if they register, why is it that they don't even know about our user group? Why is it that they don't get an email or something that says, hey, there's a user group in Charlotte, or why do we not, why can't we connect that, right? So is there room to improve? Yes, I, I think we can get there. I mean, imagine if you were first getting into DNN, and you got an email, hey, there's a user group in your area. I mean, that would just be like awesome experience. So we recently had in the community something awesome happen for onboarding newbies. And that is in the quick side. So that is point extra. Go ahead and stand up. We're gonna talk about y'all give a hand. Who knows what Hippie Quick Side is? Anybody, yeah, I mean, a lot of people do. If you don't know what Hippie Quick Side is, be sure to check it out. It's the tool that makes installing DNN easy. Uh, it's wizard based. You just click next, 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 and it installs it, and it's open source. So the reason I really love this is it saves a ton of time, right? I mean, especially if you're installing DNN, but it makes it easy for newbies to install DNN without uh, any experience. So that, that onboarding process, this fills a major gap for them. So that's why I wanted to give a shout out to this quick site. So, perception equals reality, right? We all know that. If the onboarding process in DNN isn't awesome, if it isn't easy, if it isn't frictionless, and if we don't talk about the things that we're doing, and if we don't promote the platform, then people are gonna perceive those stumbling blocks or those 
lack or voids of conversation in a negative light, right? So let's work together to change any perception uh, that may exist, and in doing so, we'll create a new reality. I think top-notch resources for newbies can drastically alter the perception of DNA because who are the loudest people? The people who are trying to get in and they can't and they're they're loud about it, right? Being in sucks. Well, who are you? I just well, I just downloaded the DNA, right? I mean, come on. So we need to make that process easy for them. So to be blunt about it, we need you. We need everyone in the DNA community to shift gears and to participate. An example of community in action, in Charlotte, we asked ourselves, what can we do to impact the greater DNA community? How many people in here have attended a DNA conference in Charlotte? Have attended a user group in person or online that we stream? Have seen some of the ridiculous tweets that we put out or read any of our blogs, right? How many of y'all would like DNA Con to Charlotte again? With or without me, chat? <laughs> so, but anyways, if, if you'd like attended a conference, read a blog, been to a meeting that we streamed online, you are reaping the benefits of a direct result of passion and energy. We're simply taking initiative in Charlotte. We're not smarter than you, we're not better than you, it's nothing like that. We're just persistent, we're motivated, and we're vocal about the platform. I think Gilbert taught us all to be uh, vocal, right? So these are the very same things that we ask of everybody in this room. And it's nothing but elbow grease and passion. And when you think about passion, people go, where the passion is, right? One day I was, you know, stalking Twitter as I do, and I saw a video of this guy that makes vacuum cleaners for Dyson. And so I just clicked this and I started watching it and I got like captivated by this guy, his passion for making a vacuum cleaner. So I don't know if any of you are like Dyson vacuum owners, and but I started watching it and I was like, man, this guy's really passionate. Like he really cares about how the vacuum works and the motor and like just every little detail, even like where the weight is on the vacuum. So my wife comes home and like, babe, we gotta buy a Dyson vacuum. <laughs> and she thinks like hell's reason over. Because like I don't care about a vacuum. But the point being is that people are drawn to passion. Just like I want a Dyson vacuum cleaner, and I, I mean probably don't shouldn't um, or have no reason to other than this guy's passion. If we're vocal about our passion, which is DNN, then we will draw more people into the community. So I want you to consider the players on the field, and I want you to consider the people in the bleachers. We're doing sports now, so we'll just keep on. If you're a player on the field, I want to encourage you to keep playing. If you're a fan in the stands, I want to invite you down to the field. Okay? I referenced influencers earlier. How many influencers do you know that are sitting in the bleachers? When you get down on the field, it's energizing. It's energizing to play the game, in our case DNA, with people who are also passionate about the same thing you're passionate about. And it's energizing to use your talents to give back to something that's much greater than yourself. <coughs> also, think about this. You grow a lot more when you're on the field than when you're in the stands, as a person. So what are you know opportunities for us to participate? I, you guys know all this. We can host conferences like Joe Craig and the guys. I say, you know what, we're gonna do something. We're gonna host a conference. You can host user groups, attend user groups, contribute, you know, be vocal. Uh, you can write blogs. Uh, you can you know answer forum questions or exchange questions. You can contribute to the documentation center. You can get active on GitHub. There are a lot of different ways. And if all that sounds like too much, just do this one thing. In your browser, when you turn on your browser every day, you got your favorite tab, right? Mine are like, you know, deerhunting.com, stuff like that. But add a tab in there that is the new to DNN forum. So that is when you turn on your browser, you got the tabs you want, and now there's a new one. And all you have to do is scan the posts that are recent, and if there's something you know, just post the answer. If you could do one a week, just imagine the impact we would make. So that one little small thing could help someone drastically. And then they'll be vocal about it, and then it'll be just a ripple effect. So this is not the last slide in the presentation. How we doing on time, all right? Um, but again, I want to reinforce 
that we're all here today because of the sponsors who are generously given to sponsor this event. So again, be sure to go and interact and engage with these guys. Uh, somebody's going to win a drone, somebody's going to win a GoPro, but more importantly, we're going to get a lot of knowledge and you're going to make a lot of relationships and it's all thanks to the sponsor. So the last slide here is to go forth and inspire. So your coaching trees or your DNA trees are ready to be fertilized and to grow. And also, somebody give Ralph a microphone tonight at after party. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank y'all. Appreciate it.